Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. As you can see today, I have my cap on to keep me warm. Some days you're out there and you're out there in the cold and you're thinking, it is freezing cold out here. And then the next day it gets colder and you think, how much colder can it get? And you, that's, you're like, ah, oh, I don't know how much colder it can get. But it seems to get colder, you know, the next day and the next day. Well, that's the way it was here in Genesis 39. It wasn't the coldness. It was the conditions that Joseph was in. The thing is, it says in Genesis chapter 39, God was with Joseph. Okay, God was with him. But his conditions get worse and worse. And you're thinking, how much worse can it get? You know, um, and you're going to see today he's like thrown even into worse conditions. And yet it still says God is with, with him. Okay, so you have to look at the circumstances in your own life and those things get worse and worse. And you're like, uh, how is God with me in all this? Okay, but you have to look at it in the whole story. This is only one chapter of the whole story uh, involving Joseph. And when you look at the big picture, you're like, oh, okay, this is why all this happened. Um, you know, Joseph had to go through all of this stuff to fulfill God's plan. Okay, it wasn't Joseph's plan. Okay, Joseph, I'm sure, would have said, uh, no, thank you, don't want to be a slave. No, thank you, I don't want to go to prison. Okay, but it was God's plan to take him through all that to fulfill his plan. Okay, so let's read today. Genesis 39, verses 13 to 23. Get your glasses, and uh, let's read. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand, now this is Potiphar's wife, remember last time, it had enticed him. He took off and he left his coat. Uh, he was getting away from her. And had run out of her, his the house, uh, the cloak in her hand, and run, run out of the house. She called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. I came in here to sleep, he came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. Okay, let me stop you there. If, if Potiphar is like really trusting his wife, he, she doesn't need the cloak to, to say that, okay? Um, if there's a good relationship between a husband and wife, all that's need to said is, you know, the word. You don't need the proof of the cloak, okay? So if, if this was really going on and Joseph was really enticing her, all she would have needed to say to Potiphar is like, uh, that Joseph is trying to make a move on me. And um, then Potiphar would like, oh, okay, well, we need to do something about that. But you can see the trust is not really good here um, because she has to rely on this cloak, okay, uh, to do that. You're going to see it, it plays even out worse for, uh, for Potiphar and his wife here. All right, verse 19. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. Notice she puts it on him. Your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Okay? Notice here it says um, uh, Potiphar uh, burned with anger. He burned with anger. It does not say who he burned anger against. Okay? Um, and the reality here is this. That in, in that day and age, if you were guilty um, of trying to, to, do, to be doing this exact crime... It was a capital offense. I mean, Joseph would have been executed right away, okay? But he wasn't. He was put in the prison with the other uh, king's servants. So he was put in not the regular prison, but the prison for that the king had for his servants, okay? So it shows us that Potiphar, um, he saw something was wrong here, but he didn't totally believe his wife, okay? But he needed to do this to... to safe face, I guess you would say. Um, so he put Joseph in this prison. He didn't execute him. Okay. So let me keep reading here. Um, but while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. Ah, he's with him again. He's there with him in prison. Amazing. 
He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he was responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. We end there. Get this. Joseph had success in everything he did, working in the prison. All right. Now, again, we say, how is God with us? And if, you know, he... He's been sold by his brothers into slavery. He is a slave, okay? Then he is falsely accused, and now he's in prison. And you're looking at all that in Joseph's eyes, and he's like, how in the world, how, how is the Lord with me? Uh, he's letting all this bad stuff happen to me, okay? But it says clearly here, the Lord is with him, all right? Even in prison, the warden is like, hey, this is a, a good guy. I don't have to, you know, worry about him. Okay, and the Lord gave him success in that prison. But again, you look at at the whole picture here as we go through Genesis, and you'll look back and you'll go, oh, okay, that's why God had him go to prison and, and all these little things work out, because God had a plan, okay? Joseph might have had a plan, um, but his plan was not the same as God's plan, okay? And God had to... to orchestrate what Joseph's uh, life was to make it part of his plan, okay? And Joseph's plan would have been, if I was Joseph, I would have been like, uh, just make me uh, second in command right away. Well, that's not like possible here. But God has his way of orchestrating everything and bringing Joseph through that to the end, okay? We don't see the end result. We see the story coming through here, and we're involved in story, each one of us has a story in our lives that we're involved with. And we look at it and we're like, why, why is this stuff happening to me? All this bad stuff happening to me. But it's not till we get to the end and we're like, oh, okay, that's why this all happened to me. Okay. I'll go back to the other day. This happened like two months ago. I, I'm at the gas station. I, I've just done this long job and I'm, I'm like tired and worn out. And I get to the gas station, and I, I'm in the, the big truck. And as I get there, I'm pulling up to the pump, and this little car, boop, gets right in front of me into where I'm going. I'm like, oh, why does this always happen to me, you know? And I'm, like, upset about it, you know, the same way with Joseph here. But God would say, hey, I'm with you, okay? And I'm like, uh, how, how are you with me in this, this little car? got in front of me now so so then i had to go i had to circle around the gas station and go and find another pump okay so i i'm like frustrated and go i get to the other pump okay and again this is not as big a deal as what happened with joseph here but it still shows god is with us so i get to the other pump and as i get to the other pump i i get out and, and, and walk up when i get out and walk up a lady over here filling up her other car she taught, she um, asked me a question, and we have a conversation. Now, this conversation was beneficial to me and to her, and this conversation never would have happened if I would have got that original spot at the gas station, okay? But God had a way of orchestrating everything out so that I lost my spot at that gas station. That little car pulled in in front of me, and I had to go around. And God had orchestrated all that so I would have that conversation with that woman that I would not have had otherwise. Okay. So as I look back at that, at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, okay, God, that's why you have or orchestrated all that out. But when I looked at it initially, I'm like, why is all this bad stuff happening to me? God can't surely be with me. But God was with me. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'm just a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through Genesis. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then. Thank you.